Stop three. Assault on the Cotton Gin. Hello and welcome to the Assault on the Cotton Gin site. This is Mary Pierce, Executive Director of the Heritage Foundation of Franklin and Williamson County. You are now at the epicenter of the Battle of Franklin. It was here that the fiercest fighting and the highest losses took place. This was also the only section of the line where Confederate forces broke through. Look first to the south. On your way here, you passed a slight elevation around a half a mile south of here called the Federal Advance Line. It was there that Union Brigadier General George Wagner placed part of his division along a slight ridge. As the Confederates pressed forward, Wagner's weak position soon collapsed, sending Union forces racing back to this main line. The resulting confusion enabled the Confederates to rush forward along Columbia Pike and through the Union defenses. Now look north and to the right of Columbia Pike. This is the site of the famous Carter Cotton Gin, a large building that many soldiers recalled as a major landmark during the fight. This was the forwardmost position of the Union defenses, heavily guarded by artillery batteries from Ohio and Kentucky and infantry regiments out of Ohio, Kentucky, Illinois, and Indiana, demonstrating how the conflict was truly a brother's war. There were also Union regiments here from Tennessee. Charging toward them by the thousands were fellow Tennesseans, as well as regiments from Alabama, Arkansas, Georgia, Louisiana, Mississippi, and Texas. It was along this east side of the pike that Confederate Generals Patrick Claiborne, Hiram Granberry, and John Adams were killed. Now look to the northwest across Columbia Pike, and it was here that the Union defenses angled back toward the Carter House and where the Confederates reached their farthest point, 50 yards deep into the Federal lines. On the Union side, soldiers from Illinois, Indiana, Missouri, and Ohio desperately fought against troops from Georgia, South Carolina, and Tennessee. As the Southern forces broke through, a reserve brigade under the Union Colonel Emerson Opdyke rushed forward to push them back. Among his troops was a regiment from Wisconsin, which included a young major named Arthur MacArthur. Despite being severely wounded, MacArthur survived the war and became the father of Douglas MacArthur, a future five-star general in the United States Army. All along this area, much of the fighting was hand-to-hand, -hand, a rare occurrence in the Civil War. In an age of long-range rifles and artillery, armies rarely had the chance to come in direct contact for extended periods. Franklin would be a terrible exception. Much of this was due to a lack of wind that evening, which let thick clouds of gun smoke hang over the battlefield and the increasing darkness of nightfall. The lack of visibility forced both armies to fight at close quarters, firing at each other from point-blank range and using their guns as clubs. Look further north along the west side of Columbia Pike and you will see the Carter House. The Carter family, the Lotes family from across the road, and others took refuge in the basement of this brick home as the battle raged above them. Among nearly two dozen civilians in the cellar that evening was little Matilda Lotes, who had just celebrated her sixth birthday the day before. The head of the Carter household, Fountain Branch Carter, a 67-year-old widower, had seen three of his sons fight in the Confederacy. Among them was Todd Carter, who was at that moment charging toward his childhood home, a place he had not seen for three years. Astride his horse, the young captain could not contain his excitement, crying out, Follow me, boys, I'm almost home. He galloped forward, only to be mortally wounded by a swarm of bullets. He would die two days later inside the Carter house, surrounded by his family. 
After the battle, the Carter House was converted into a field hospital, as were more than 40 other buildings in the immediate area. To this day, the Carter House, the Lotes House, Carrington, and many other structures still have the floors stained with blood from the wounded and from amputations. Your next stop is Rest Haven and Old City Cemeteries. Proceed north on Columbia Pike. When you reach downtown, take a right on Main Street, Highway 31, and then take the first left onto Fourth Avenue North. After two blocks, the cemeteries will be on your left and right.